So before you see that, let's get you sworn in. Yes, sir. Raise your right hand. Say it. Also, I'm Curry James Loyal Jr. from the Township Police Department. Okay, last name for the record. D O Y L E, sir. Do you spare her time on the penalty provided by the law for testimony? You're about to give us support. Shall we be true? Whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, officer. You can take your seat. Yes, sir. Thank you. Keep your voice nice and amplified so we can all hear you without the attorneys to finish their questioning before you respond. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Ms. Hutchinson. Thank you, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Officer Brian, how are you currently employed? Pemberton Township Police Department. And how long have you been employed there? As a police officer, I have been 17 years. Um, and can you just explain to the jury just some of the roles that you take as a police officer uh, in Pemberton Township? Yes, ma'am. I'm currently a traffic safety officer. My primary objectives out there are traffic enforcement on the road leads. But obviously, the nature of calls in Permanent Township, I have had more routine calls. Um, I have held the position of traffic safety officer for about 10, 11 years now. Uh, I've also been a training officer and an officer in charge at one time when the sergeant was absent. Okay, thank you. Now, directing your attention specifically to March 21st of 2017, were you on duty at uh, Patrolman that evening? Yes, ma'am, I was. And uh, while you were on duty, were you in a marked patrol car? Yes, I was. Okay. And were you wearing your police uniform at the time? Yes, ma'am. Now, at approximately 8.58 p.m. that night, were you dispatched to a particular location? Yes, ma'am, I was. And what location were you dispatched to? That was an area in Sunbury Village, the area of Kinsley Road and Bush Street. Okay. And uh, Sunbury Village is, in fact, in Pemberton Township, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, now, why were you dispatched to that specific location? We were dispatched for a report of gunshots in the area. Did you in fact respond to that area? I did. I'm going to show you what's been pre-marked as S4 for identification. Judge, I have seen it. Okay, thank you. I'm going to show you what's been marked as S4 for identification. Just take a look at that. Yes, ma'am, I'm familiar. Okay, and is this, uh, can you tell the jury what you're looking at? We are looking at an overhead view of the Sunbury Village area of Permanent Township. Okay, and is this an accurate representation um, of how Sunbury was portrayed back in March of 2017? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and still accurate today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, at this time, you're on the state, we'd have to move S4 in the evidence and publish it. The objection, uh, no, sir, no, sir, maybe publish it. Officer, if you need to step down to answer any questions, we'll be able to do so. Is there another one? Oh, no. Um, from if you just join me down to the firm. Yes, sir. Okay. And while looking at the map, can you just generally the area of Kinsley and Bush, if you're familiar, uh, specifically in the Sunbury area, obviously? This is the main road out front of Sunbury Village, it's covered the Browns Mills Road. The road in question, Kinsley Road parallels Permanent Browns Mills Road is the first block in, so to speak. It runs east west. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been pre marked as S5 now for identification. Can you just tell me where you're looking at there? It's a blown up area of uh, the same location. Okay, so just what we were looking at, just a closer up here? Correct. Um, now, is this an accurate depiction of how it looks back in March of 2017? Yes, it is. And still reflective of today, how it looks? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And specifically, again, just for the record, the specific intersection on this map that we're concerned with, um, can you just tell the jury what we're, again, what we're going to be looking at? Yes, this is a blown up portion of the area of Kinsley and Bush. Okay. Can you join me down there again? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Oh, you're on the stage. Just move that side Thank you. Okay. Can you again just point out, I know it's self explanatory, but point out Kinsley and Bush area? This is the area of Kinsley and their section of Bush. Okay, thank you. Okay. 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 So, Officer, when you get that call that evening, um, when you respond to that area, upon approaching the area of Bush and Kinsley, uh, what kind of thing did you observe? Uh, when I entered, I came down Kinsley Road 
coming from the Evans area, approaching from the east, heading west. Okay. Um, now, were there people outside to take note when you were approaching the area? There were fewer than normal people in this area at okay. this time of the day. And when you say fewer than normal, was that odd, regular? It was unusual for a call of this nature, yes. Okay. Now, prior to arriving at that intersection, um, did you notice anything else upon going into the area of Sunbury Village? As I entered, there was a blue F-150 pickup truck that was parked on Kinsley, and it was away from the curb, it was out towards the center of the street. So at that point, due to the nature of the call, I decided to conduct a motor vehicle stop okay. on that vehicle. And um, why, in fact, you, why did you conduct a motor vehicle stop? The vehicle was more than six inches from the curb, it was blocking the roadway. Um, now, upon performing the motor vehicle stop, what if anything did you do next? I identified the driver. And who was that? Driver was Peggy Perez. Okay. And did you learn why she was in that area, why she was on location? She advised me that she had received a phone call from her son saying that there may have been gunshots in the area. Okay. Um, now, while you're speaking with her, is there anything else that's happening? Anything else going on? At the time I walked away from her vehicle and I determined that she wasn't part of the uh, current call, I heard a female voice direct me further west down, down Kinsley Road, more towards the Bush intersection. Okay. And upon hearing that voice, uh, what did you do in response? You got back in my patrol car and headed further west down Kinsley towards the area of Bush. Okay. Now, when you get to, or do you arrive at that intersection then of Bush and Kinsley? Yes, I do. And when you get there, uh, what do you see? When I got to the intersection, I noticed that there was a car stopped facing the opposite direction, coming down Kinsley towards me. It was at the stop sign at the intersection with Bush. Um, do you recall a uh, specific type of the car? It was a Honda. Thank you. I'm going to show you what's been pre marked as. Oh, yes, ma'am. We're looking at the back of the Honda that was parked at the stop sign at the intersection as I was approaching from the opposite direction. Okay. And is this the area that you that you found the car in? Yes, ma'am. And uh, is this an accurate depiction of the cars as you saw that evening? Yes. Okay. All right. This Okay. Yes, ma'am. And was the door, the passenger side door, do you recall if that was open when you arrived? I do not recall. Okay. Now, the little cones and placards that we see, um, were they there at the time or were they placed later? Upon my initial arrival, they were not on location. Okay. Um, and that is, in fact, you stated how the vehicle was positioned when you arrived at that evening? Yes. Now, upon arriving and seeing the vehicle in that location, what, if anything, did you do next? Upon my initial arrival, I observed the vehicle, but upon my initial inspection, I determined as I drove past it, it was unoccupied at the time. I drove slightly past the vehicle and parked my patrol car on, on Kinsley Road, just past the back of the Honda. Now, after driving past the Honda and not seeing anyone in it, did you then approach the car at some point? I did not approach the car right away. Okay. What, if anything, did you do next? First thing I did, I my vehicle. I looked around for any possible witnesses. There was absolutely nobody in the area whatsoever. Okay. Um, after looking for witnesses, what did you do after that? A uh, voice yelled to me and told me in the vehicle. At that point, I ran all the way over to the vehicle, and I observed the victim slumped over in, in the vehicle. Okay. Um, can you 
describe, when you say it's over, can you describe to the jury what you mean? How was, how was he positioned? Yes, as far as this being the driver's seat, he was, his body was all the way over into the passenger side of the vehicle, across the, we'll call it the center armrest area, so to speak. Okay. Um, now, did you know at that time who that person in that car was? I didn't. Did you come to learn later uh, that it was in fact Shaquille Williams? I did. Uh, were you able to assess his condition as you approached and saw him slumped over? Yes, ma'am, I was. I observed that he had bullet wounds in his face, I believe, in his neck area. Okay. And was he moving at all at that time? No, ma'am. Um, so you said you saw the bullet wounds uh, specifically to his face and neck area? Yes, sir. Uh, did you, in fact, see any blood in the area? I did. There was blood inside the vehicle. Okay. And did he in fact have blood coming from his uh, the facial area where you saw the bullet wound? He did. Uh, did you see any bullets or shell, shell casings at that time? I stepped back from the vehicle at that point, yes. I believe I may have even stepped on a shell casing or something which brought my attention to that on the ground, yes. Now, at this point, <clears throat> are other officers then arriving on scene? They arrived a few moments after I arrived, correct. I'd say probably within the next 30 seconds. And do you recall who some of the officers that arrived after you were? It was at that time patrolman. It was now Sergeant Glass and patrolman Sawyer arrived. Okay. And upon their arrival, what if anything happened next after that? They removed Mr. Williams from the vehicle and immediately began CPR. Okay. Now, as those officers are conducting CPR on the victim, what if anything are you doing at that point? So at that point, I was still looking around for potential witnesses. I spoke to a gentleman by the name of Ron Vandegrift. Okay. Now, just Based on your speaking with the different individuals that may have been left on the scene, uh, what did you learn uh, based on your investigation at that time? I learned that he had heard what he reported to me was the gunshots. He advised me that initially when he heard them, he assumed that they were to, they were to be fireworks because of how rapidly that they went off. Later on, he came out and he discovered what had happened. He said that it had to be more than one gun that was being shot due to the, the, the repeated rapid shots that he had heard. Okay. Now, based on speaking with this individual and others, did you learn anything about people that had fled from the scene or others that were on the scene initially? A uh, female came up to me by the name of Danae Hamilton, identified herself as the, uh, as the victim's sister. Okay. Um, now, at any time, did you become aware that an individual named Kahid Saruti had been involved in some way? Yes, ma'am. She advised me that she has seen Kahid in the vehicle with him traveling from the 140 block area of Kinsley Road. And she reported to me, I asked her if, if when she said the name Kahid, if she meant Kahid Saruti. And she said she didn't know him like that, she only knew him as Kahid. Okay. Um, but you knew him to be Kahid Saruti? I did. Okay. Now, once the officers um, that were applying or conducting CPR, uh, on the victim, uh, did they in fact remove the victim's shirt at some point? They did. Okay. Now, upon removing his shirt, uh, what if anything did you observe? There was there was uh, another bullet wound. Okay. Just one that I recall. Okay. Uh, so the types types of injuries you, you observed, you had said to the face, to the neck, and now somewhere I'm guessing upon the body. Is that correct? Sure, sure. Correct. Okay. Um, and could you in fact tell what caused these wounds that you were now more visible? They appear to be bullet wounds. Okay. Um, anything else aside from what you had seen in tripping on shell casing that would lead you to believe that they were in fact gunshot wounds? Based upon the testimony or the statements that were made by the witness and the, the shell casings and the, the wounds upon the victim. Okay. Um, when you stepped back from that scene, uh, you said you had seen the shell casing. Did you see one, more than one? There were multiple. I also observed there was a uh, damage to the windshield of the vehicle, and it was it was damaged. It was a, such something that struck the windshield to cause the uh, to cause the damage, okay. a projectile. Now, when the officers are conducting CPR, um, do they they pull the victim out of the car to do that? Yes, correct. And you were still in the area for that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what the mark is. S14. Yes, that was a victim of the Okay, now is that an accurate representation of the 
prostitution saw uh, the victim as he was portrayed after being pulled out of the car that evening? Yes, sir. And is that uh, during or right after the officers had uh, conducted CPR or attempted to conduct CPR? Yes, sir. So this is uh, a picture of what you had seen that evening once the victim was pulled from the car? Correct. And you had said that you first noticed a gunshot to his face. Can you, are you able to see where in that picture that that would be? Looks like it's on the right side of the victim's face. And the other side. Okay. Um, so, did you notice anything upon his neck at that time as well? At the time, no, I did not. With the, uh, with the gauze in the area where it is, I'm going to assume that that's where, prior to the EMTs arriving and the gauze being there, that's where the, I observed the wound when they initially took his shirt off. Okay. Now, while you were on location, um, did the EMS and paramedics at some point arrive? They did. Okay. And did they also assess the victim's condition? Yes, they did. And was he, uh, were they ultimately were able to pronounce Shaquille Williams as deceased? Is that correct? Correct. Do you recall approximately what time that was? I do not. Would it refresh your recollection to review your report? It would. I'm going to show you what's been pre marked as S3. He was pronounced by virtual board he's hospital 21 22 hours by dr charles Milton. Thank you. Okay. okay so obviously your report was first direct election yes ma'am okay. um once the victim was in fact pronounced deceased uh what if anything did you do after that there was a time at one point during the investigation we found a blood trail. There were some blood marks on the roadway in front of the vehicle. Okay. At that time, I decided to start following them. Okay. So were you, in fact, at that point, it's fair to say you were canvassing the area? Correct. Okay. And you came upon this blood trail? Yes. And uh, do you recall where the blood trail was coming from, going to? The blood trail led in two directions. Obviously, the way it came from and the way it went. The blood trail we followed it in one direction led right back to the vehicle the passenger side of the vehicle the other direction the blood trail continued down kinsley road eastbound in the same direction i had approached towards the 140 block okay um at some point were you able to identify or mark that trail yes i was i'm going to show you what the mark is s31 Yes, ma'am. You're looking at the markers that we placed on the roadway in the direction that we found the blood trail. Okay. Now, that accurate uh, depiction of the markers and the blood trail that you found that evening on March 21st? Very well. At this time, you're going to say you're going to publish S31? S31 is the right line. Okay. Okay. Um, you're Passenger side that you spoke about is that's what's pictured on the left side of the photo here. 
Yes, it appears the picture of the photograph was taken from directly behind the passenger side door. Okay, and the area where the plaque leads down to, again, uh, is what area? That is, the picture is facing uh, eastward down Kinsey Road, it's the direction of the blood trail can follow. Okay. Do you recall approximately how far down that blood trail went? If you look in the photograph there, you can see the, the, the number two being right in the foreground, then they proceed on three, four, five of the times they cross the intersections <coughs> and the telephone pole. They said proceed to the. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. The, okay. the blood trail led to the area of the first telephone pole there, and then as you can see, they're smaller directly down the sidewalk eastbound down Kinsley Road towards that second telephone pole. Thank you. Uh, and that was all ultimately photographed uh, as well, in addition to the placards being placed. Is that correct? Uh, the, the photographs would have been taken by Detective Tim Horn, <coughs> not myself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart O'Reilly. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning, morning, sir. How are you? Good. A couple quick questions. You mentioned Peggy Perez. Yes, sir. Do you recall her? Very well, sir. Uh, you, I, did you know her before you encountered her that night? I did, sir. And you know she was there looking for Javante Jean, right? I did not know that, sir. You knew Javante Jean is? I do, sir. Okay. A boyfriend? Not to my recollection, sir, no. Okay. Now, let me ask you about the young lady you referenced as Hamilton, Miss Hamilton. What was her first name? I believe it was Danae. Is she also known by Newton? Danae Newton? You know that? Not to me, sir. Okay. Because she is the sister of the deceased, correct? That's what she told me, yes, sir. Okay. And you have no reason not to believe that, right? No reason, sir. Okay, now, she was standing by the car when you arrived on the scene? I don't recall where I encountered her. It was in the area of the intersection when I spoke to her. Did she tell you that she was in the neighborhood and heard the shots uh, that were fired that night? She told me she did not hear the shots. Sir. She did not hear the shots. Correct. Okay. Did, he, did she tell you that she approached the car and saw two individuals running away from the car? What she initially told me was that she observed her brother in the vehicle with Kahid. She told me that prior she saw them engaged in conversation with several individuals, many of which she did not know, but she did know one to be Javante Jean, and the other one was Brandon Clifford. Okay, now, you, you were involved in this investigation, correct? Just the initial, sir, once again. Are you aware that Javante Jean was identified um, by Mr. Objection, Lump Your Honor. Yes. You hear a The question was, is he aware of somebody who was identified? Is there a proper question? I'll, I'll over there. Are you aware that a gentleman by the name of Lamont Brown identified Mr. Gene as one of the shooters? I did not know that, sir. Do you, are you aware that Miss Hamilton identified Kayvon Carter and Brandon Clifton as running from the scene, both with well, one gentleman having a gun in his hand? No, sir. I'm not familiar with that? No, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Yes, sir. 